Today we'll be discussing about quartiles. To understand what quartiles are, we will need to first explain a term called partition values. So one important thing we do when we have a data set is to try to understand the distribution of the data, right? Partition values are statistical measures used to divide a data set into equal parts. And these partition values are useful in statistics to understand how the data is distributed. So if we have a data set and we want to divide it into, let's say, four equal parts or 10 equal parts, then just like when we want to summarize numerical data, we end up using measures of central tendency as well as the measures of dispersion. Quartiles, deciles, and percentiles are the most common partition values in use. Quartiles are used to divide the data set into four equal parts, as the name implies. Quarter, right? While deciles are used in statistics to divide the data set into 10 equal parts. And lastly, percentiles help to divide the data into 100 equal parts. Our focus in this video is on quartiles. Quartiles are referred to as measures of relative position because they demarcate positions that help us to identify values that divide the sorted data into four equal parts. Quartiles are not measures of center, but measures of position. The first quartile is termed Q1, and this is obtained by finding the median of the lower half of the data. While the second quartile, denoted as Q2, is the median of the whole data set. And the third quartile, which is Q3, is the median of the upper half of the data. Now you will notice that Q2 is the median of the data set, so we can say it's a measure of center, right? While Q1, which is the first quartile, and the third quartile, Q3, are measures of variability. They help us to measure the spread of the data, as well as to identify outliers and the skewness of the data. The distance between Q1 and Q3 is called the interquartile range and this is another measure of variability which we'll be discussing in our next video. So how do we calculate quartiles? Let's use an example of this data set of systolic blood pressures of all the patients that attended the cardiology clinic of Amadou Bello University Teaching Hospital last week Tuesday. All these values are in millimeters of mercury. So first we'll need to sort this data from smallest to the largest. Awesome. Then we find the position of each quartile. It's actually easier to start from the median of the data set, and that's Q2, right? So if we look at this data set, we have nine data points. So the median is going to be on the fifth data point, which is 120. Great. So our Q2 is 120 millimeters of mercury. Then let's find our first quartile, Q1. Remember, Q1 is the median of the lower half of the data set, right? And the lower half consists of four observations, 80, 90, 99, and 110, right? Now, since we have an even number of observations, we will need to find the average of the middle two numbers in the lower half. The middle two numbers are 90 and 99. So the average of 90 and 99 is 90 plus 99 divided by 2 that will give us 94.5. So our Q1 is 94.5 millimeters of mercury. Awesome. And lastly, let's go ahead and find the third quartile, Q3. So we said the third quartile is the median of the upper half of the data, right? We need to find the average of the middle two numbers in the upper half. And the upper half consists of four values, 130, 159, 160, and 180, right? So the middle two numbers are 159 and 160. The average of 159 and 160 is going to be 159 plus 160 divided by 2. That will be equal to 159.5. So our Q3 is 159.5 millimeters of mercury. Great. So the quartiles for this data set of systolic blood pressures are Q1 is equals to 94.5 millimeters of mercury, that's around here. Q2 is equals to 120 millimeters of mercury, and that's also around here. And Q3 is equal to 159.5 millimeters of mercury, right about here. So what does this mean? 
we can see that with the quartiles, our data is divided into four equal parts. That's four quarters, right? Please note that there are four quarters and only three quartiles, Q1, Q2, and Q3. There is no such thing as Q4 as a lot of people make this mistake. So the three quartiles help us to divide our data into four equal quarters, right? Now putting this into the context of our data, the first quartile, Q1, which is 94.5 millimeters of mercury, means that 25% of our patients that attended the clinic have a systolic blood pressure lower than 94.5 millimeters of mercury. Can we put this in another way? Yes, of course. 75% had a systolic blood pressure higher than 94.5 millimeters mercury. Easy peasy, right? Now, with a Q2 of 120 millimeters of mercury, that's our median. This simply means that 50% of the patients had a systolic blood pressure lower than 120 millimeters of mercury, or 50% had greater than 120 millimeters of mercury. And for a Q3 of 159.5 millimeters of mercury, this indicates that 25% of our patients had a systolic blood pressure above 159.5 millimeters of mercury and 75% had a systolic blood pressure below 159.5 millimeters of mercury. Now knowing these quartiles helps us to know the distribution of the data and can help us to make more informed decisions. And in summary, partition values helps us to divide our data set into equal parts so that we can understand the distribution of the data. Quartiles help to divide the data into four equal parts. Those are four quarters, right? There are only three quartiles, Q1, Q2, and Q3, not four quartiles. There is no such thing as a Q4. The first quartile, Q1, is the median of the lower half of the data, and 25% of all the data points are less than Q1. The second quartile, Q2, is the median of the entire data set, and 50% of the values lie above and 50% lie below it. The third quartile, Q3, is the median of the upper half of the data set and 25% of the data points lie above the third quartile. Now, it's your turn. The PCV of 16 children receiving chemotherapy in the pediatric ward of Amadou Bello University Teaching Hospital were as follows. Calculate the first, second, and third quartiles. How many children had a PCV less than 25% of all the values? Put your responses in the comment section below and please do not ignore this. In my next video, God willing, we will be identifying the quartiles of a grouped frequency distribution. Now, if you've gained value with this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more videos like this. And as always, thanks for watching.